Hi, everybody. It is almost 100,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. And to celebrate, I'm going to get us some new stuff around here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the, uh, the, the DC, the on-screen DC power supply and stuff to make these videos even better and upgrade some equipment around here. Thank you so much for you guys that are new to the channel and for you guys that have been with us for a long time. And for today's video, let's see if we can get this phone for data recovery. Let's try to recover data from, uh, from this phone. We're going to try to recover data from, a, from an, an iPhone that's broken, where the board is actually broken in half. Can we get data from a broken Phone. So let's look at the actual phone this came out of. This is a real train wreck. Now this is pretty typical of intentional damage. This is a mad with you damage. So somebody tried to put a hurtin on this phone. And when this happens, it's not uncommon for the board to fracture on the armpit. But the worst part actually ends up being the long screw damage or the, sc the screw hole damage. So uh, let's do a physical exam first. So let's go ahead and head to the microscope. All right, microscope exam, everything looks good down here on the bottom half of the board. And we've got our shields on, there's no water damage, but here's the problem area. Here's the, here's the break. Oh, it's got some free pubes, looks like. Wow, that, oh, I see what this is. This is super glue. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, you can't super glue boards back together. Good try. I can definitely, I appreciate the the effort there but that's not that's not a viable solution it's not as if only it were that easy so we're going to give up on these chips so we could do an experiment and take it as a working iphone 6s snap it in half and see if it would boot and guess what in my experience they generally do so that stuff out there on the end is a lot of antennas, signaling, power buttons, stuff that you really don't need to, to actually boot up the phone. So we're gonna just disregard that for now. And let's take a close look. We'll put some uh, alcohol to clean it up so that we can, we can see a little bit. So we've already got our sticker shields taken off and it looks like somebody has worked on this before us. So this is coming to us from another shop. Here's the real big problem though, instead of a nice looking screw hole or screw bracket like this one instead of that we are completely missing the screw bracket and two for one we're also missing the screw bracket there now you can actually see the underlying traces i want to show you a cool trick when we're evaluating the traces that are under a torn screw hole it's really cool to look at them under uv light so let's grab the uv light and check that out so here is our UV light, which, as you can guess, is available at iPad Rehab Supply. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna plug this in. All right, so here we go. And now with UV light, look at that. Isn't that cool? Ta-da! <gasps> Woo, UV light. Now UV is dangerous. So, so I used to make everybody that bought one also buy the safety glasses because I'm a mom, but um, you're adults. Don't look into the UV light with, your, uh, with your, your eyeballs. All right, so we can see that, that there's a myriad of traces that are under there, and you can really look closely. Isn't this so cool? I just love this. And to try to guess which ones, if any, are actually torn. And I think that we can see that there's a you know, one that looks like a, a insect leg down here in the corner. See that? So there's two. So one, two are torn down there that we'll have to just try to figure out where do they go? Do we need them? And then we've got a broken one right here. It looks like it has a microvia. Get back here. Let's focus that up. Yeah, so we can, we can see this microvia that goes to nothing. So there's a missing, uh, missing end right there. So this guy is also torn. 
All right. What about the other hole? That's what she said. <laughs> All right. Whoa. So at the other, it looks like somebody took a bite out of this one. So we have, oh, oh that is really cool. That's like these kind of layers. You can see this top ground layer has been shredded off. And then we can see that may actually even, I think that's the third layer below there. Yeah. So we can see these thermal ground vias that are kind of all over here and then the sort of spooge from the ripping off now this is not long screw damage to be clear this is twisty twisty rip that screw post right off of the board that's what happened when you screw logic boards down into the frame this is like the worst possible <laughs> example of flexion based damage and i think it's a really good example because if you screw the board into the frame when the frame bends the board gets a lot of stresses and pressures on it. All right, so that's what we're dealing with. And on this side, we can see that we've got a long skinny guy coming up that's torn. And then we've got a, the second guy that's torn there. And then we would have to try to look up to see whether or not we have like catastrophic damage in here, or was this just a ground plane? And we could do that by filleting apart another 6S, or just let's, since this is data recovery, let's just look for symptoms and see if those symptoms correlate with missing traces that we need to do trace repair. Okay, so I have connected at the battery connector, DC power supply, I've connected a dock, and I have connected a screen. We'll, we'll give it high hopes. Let's see, maybe, if, maybe this board will boot up just fine. Maybe just nobody ever tried to boot it. Maybe he doesn't have anything wrong with it. Let's find out. So there's two ways to prompt a phone to boot. One is to find the 1v8 always line and touch that to ground. That would be the native signal for a phone that is connected to a battery or DC power supply. The other way is we can just plug in a dock connector briefly, which will also trigger the phone to boot, just like you plugged it in. So let's do that here. We're going to plug it in at the dock prompt 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 to boot and ha ha we have backlight we have image and we've got an apple logo let's see if this phone can boot up all the way i'm going to go ahead and take this usb and connect it to the computer so we can hear it if it actually boots up <gasps> i hear action on the computer so let's see the computer is recognizing this phone so it looks like it is going to, to, to boot up. No, don't, don't, don't update my iTunes. I'm in the middle of a video. Embarrassing. All right, so let's see. Can this thing boot all the way? And does it have touch? So in order to actually access the data, I have to be able to enter the passcode. Passcode is a deal breaker. So let's see. Let's get that passcode. Oh, no. Wah, wah. No touch. Let's just hope. We'll always try the hope method first. Hope method is very popular among people doing board repair and general repair. Hope that maybe something's up, and I hope that it has touch. Hope, hope, hope. Yee! All right. Hope method is fail. It's a fail a lot of the time. It's not really a great method, not very effective. Okay, so now we have to do troubleshooting. So this board can, in fact, boot. It can boot up just fine, but it doesn't have touch. So let's go back and try to figure out why that is. So to investigate a system problem like no touch at a connector, we're going to use the handy dandy iBridge Flex Set, which we're really, in, we're really loving. These are brand new, and you guessed it, available at iPad Rehab Supply. So click over to store.ipadrehab.com to pick up your iBridge flex sets that are really useful for things like this. So we're gonna open this sucker up and grab out this one. So this is our digitizer, our touch, and our uh, LCD display connector. So what we do is we plug in to the connector on the board Oh, this one's home button, home button and digitizer. All right, so there we go, yeah. LCD digitizer and home button, those are the two things. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take diode mode measurements, which is our way that we indirectly infer 
the overall resistance on the line. Is it short or open on each one of these lines? So some of these lines are going to be resets and enables and power and data in and out. So we're going to see if we have a problem on a line in this um, connector that we think is important for touch. All right, so I've got the iBridge attached uh, to the connector and I'm going to leave the screen off. I could put the screen on if I wanted to take a voltage measurement with the phone under power, but I'm going to leave it off because I think that these diode mode measurements are generally done with the screen off because the iBridge used to not exist, in which case it'd be mighty hard to take these measurements with the screen attached. So this board's going to be weird though because it's got a lot of potentially broken traces and it's missing that corner end piece. So we might have to take our readings with a little bit more of a grain of salt. What we're really looking for is, is there an open line that is from the long screw damage? So let's find out. An inappropriate open, that's what we're looking for. So here we're expecting 370, we're getting 515. So we'll say close enough, close enough, as expected OL, close enough, close enough. All right, let's see, where are we right there? Let's move it up so that you guys can see. So pin, let's see, where were we? Let's try it. We were at OL at pin 38. This should be 370. All right, close enough, close enough. Aha, that's the kind of problem we're looking for. This is not open line or o ol overload meaning that it's infinite resistance because the line is broken it's essentially an enormous resistor called nothing is connected between this pad and wherever pin 32 goes all right so that's um if we so we could go down the rest of the connector and pin 32 is the only mismatch. So that's great news. Let's look up and see what the heck is pin 32 supposed to do. All right, so we are using ZXW, Zillion Times Work. This is a tool from China that we use a lot. And you guessed it, <laughs> available at ipadrehab.com. All right, so we are going to use ZXW to get a board view for the iPhone 6s. So we're going to hunt down the iPhone 6s. Here it is, the iPhone 6s. All right, and ZXW comes with lots of free viruses from China, and we've been using it a long time. We really like it. So let's look up. Pin 32, what are you? AP, so that's the CPU application processor, AP to touch reset connector side and it's reset when low. So that's pretty important. Enables and resets, those are real deal breakers. So we've got no touch at all. Is it consistent that AP to touch reset would produce no touch at all? Yes, it is. Because if you don't have a reset, you don't have the function. So let's go on a hunt and say, all right, well, what, what can we, uh, where does this line go? So let's see. It looks like it goes from pin 32. Where does it go? Aha, uh -huh. pin 32 there, it, it is also goes strangely to the fingerprint sensor home button connector. All right, so we've got AP to touch reset goes to the fingerprint sensor home button connector and it goes through this filter. And on the other side of the filter, it's gonna be the same line. The filter's a wire, but it's renamed AP to touch reset. So we've lost that C-O-N-N. -N. All right, so where does it go after that? From the filter, it goes to the CPU, the AP, application processor. All right, so now we could kind of, if we wanted to draw it out, we could say this line goes from CPU, there's a filter, and then it splits. It goes to the home button connector, and it goes to the touch connector, and there's a cap on the line. That's the entire line. So we have a open line between the CPU and our touch connector. So my first question would be, well, is the line okay out at the, um, the other spot there at the, at the home button connector? So let's check, where could we measure that? So let's see. So we can measure this at the third pin in. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna measure to see, is the line good from the CPU to this point? Because if it is, then all we need to do is to bring the line from there over to our touch connector. So let's check on that. 
All right, so we've oriented the board to look just like it does on ZXW, and we're going to drill down on that number third position pin. Red probe on ground, diode mode, survey says. Nope. Not okay. So it's not okay here. All right. Well, then where do you think our break is? I bet our break is going to be in one or the other or both of these screw holes. So that line probably was routed from over here at the CPU, and it went to one or both of these, and it ends up getting to its final destination. So that's going to be tougher. We're going to have to hunt down to see what in this jolly mess is the actual torn end of that now severed line. That's going to be a challenge. So to do that, let's uh, we could we could go a couple of different ways. One in the old days is the only way you just have to scrape down with uh, a fiberglass pen, a bare board, or and just try to map out everything with a multimeter. We used to have to do that for the original discovery of the iPhone 6 long screw damage back on Christmas Day 2014 or whenever that was 15. I'm not sure. And uh, today, though, we might be able to get a hint from looking at some of the screw map diagrams that are in ZXW. So let's head back to ZXW and see if we can find our reset line in the screw mappings. So we are in luck because there is screw holes break. There is a mapping for our particular board. And that's not always the case, but this is all crowdsourced information. People have figured this out. And aha, all right, so we have in the 6S our two screw holes. All right, so the good news is that over here at screw hole, uh, not a lot going on. The thing that, that we've got this guy that does look broken when we looked at our board. And then we had a lot of stuff, that, a lot of lines in the third layer running back and forth. So let's see, who the heck is this? Yay, that's our buddy. It's our friend, AP to touch reset, yay. So let's see, is there an, a good diode mode reading? Does it actually make it back to the CPU from this point here? Let's find out. So we've got to find that nub in our sea of spaghetti and see, hey, does that go all the way back to the CPU? So let's give that a try. Okay, so I'm actually using some flux and my soldering iron to probe around in here and sort some things out because I'm not going to be able to, to have the UV light on and use both hands. So I'm looking for that pattern, that little piece of spaghetti. All right, so there should be two. All right, so I think I can see what's going on here. Let me show you with the UV light. It looks like an amazing moonscape. Really cool. All right, hopefully you guys can see if we look over here in this area, here comes two lines, A and B. B is chopped. Look at that. There is the washed out drawbridge. So our, that's our guy, and that's where he's broken. So hopefully over here we can find the other end of him. So over here, this is his buddy, the adjacent microvia. And this, somewhere in here, this is our guy. So we're going to try to put a multimeter in here and see if we can pick up the actual, you know, good diode mode reading going back to the CPU. That's the connection spot. We're going to have to do some kind of trace repair on that spot right there. That's my guess. All right, I've got my UV light propped up, so let's hurry, hurry and take this measurement. It's a lot brighter under, under the microscope. The camera is not showing you the detail at all. All right, hey, there we go. That's our normal diode mode reading, which tells us, yes, this line is going back from there. It is making good connection to the CPU. That's our problem. Ding. All right, now, how are we going to solve this sucker? All right, first, let's probe around a little bit. So let's check. Our open line here at pin 32 is in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 position. So this is definitely open to our actual nub that goes back to the CPU. But my question is, are these two spots connected? Is pin 7 or pin 32, is that connected over here to this third position? Let's see. Continuity test. 
Aha, uh -huh. so all we really have to do is deliver from the CPU, from our nub, we've got to deliver a solid line over here to this pin, which w since there's continuity, that will also uh, bridge the gap all the way over to our uh, pin 32. So let's do that because it's a lot easier to make a jumper out here, maybe on that filter or something, or just on the connector that we're not really using. Um, than it is to kind of get in here with all these guys. They all need to be there. So let's try that. So we're going to first see if, let's try to do the, the hard part. We're going to get a jumper tinned and try to attach it to that torn little trace. And then we got to bring it over here to where it needs to go. So that's going to be our approach. So let's get busy on that. All right, so we're going to start with some 44 gauge magnet wire. You guessed it. <laughs> Guess where you can find that? Uh, iPad Rehab Supply. Now this is the really cool stuff that Christy put in her sewing machine and sewed onto little bobbins, like you wind a bobbin of thread. She wound those up so that you would have these like little portable package so you don't have to carry around this giant thing. Pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna take some of that. That's not the deal today. All right, a little bit more flux. And let's tin this sucker. I can't tell you how awesome it is to see the Apple support community getting called out. Those guys have made me cry. I mean, over the years, they're just, it's just awful over there. It's such a toxic place where they have been allowed to appear to be Apple. <laughs> they are they are representing Apple. It's Apple's owned and moderated forum. And they are such bullies. Oh my God. Never in my adult life have I ever been so bullied by a bunch of condescending, closed minded people as the elitists at the Apple Sport Community Forum. And finally, I mean, they've been deleting, they've been harming people for so long. You know, I've, I've watched since Touch Disease. Back at Touch Disease, an Error 53. That's when I first went there. They denied Error 53. They denied Touch Disease, just flagging and deleting any post that says you can fix this stuff. Even now with Audio IC problem, they have been deleting, they've deleted, I don't know, 10 posts that I made selling people that, yeah, you know, find a local person to help you with this stuff. Not send it to Jessa. Find a local person. There are lots of people. We've trained 400 and some people to do board repair. You should be able to get your stuff fixed near you. No need to throw this away. And they are intolerant to that, which I get it. They want you to buy a new phone. I get it. But for data recovery, man, that is that is over the line. You know, it doesn't hurt Apple to, to let people get their pictures back by going to somebody that knows how to do this kind of stuff. Definitely doable. So I'm really, it's really cool to see them getting a little bit of comeuppance. All right, trace repair time. Dun, 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 dun. Now this is what, this is tough. You got to practice for a long time. Mark is a whiz at it. He can knock these things out uh, in seconds and often does so. It's a great little party trick old Mark Schaefer has. He has beaten me many, many times. All right, so now I'm, I've got to find where is the actual spot, and it looks like it's right there. All right, I think I've got it. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, I think that I was able to solder <laughs> that wire into the spot that is the torn nub of the trace leading back to that CPU ball for the AP to touch reset line. Now, other end, let's do the easy end now, where now all this has to do is travel around to that third pin. So we'll just kind of, we're going to, let's just data not to be a phone, so we're not worried about appearance. We are worried about just getting this to work. This is obviously not going to be a phone again with missing, <laughs> missing its entire left arm. So we're just going for data. All right, so we may actually have to use this connector if we need to do a home, bu home button for any reason. Um, so we don't want to go in the connector. So we'll start by just trying to tag the end of that jumper down here at the foot 
of that third pin, which I have a bad habit of calling this pin three when it's not pin three, it's just the third one. All right, I think that's got it. Let's see if I can get out of there. All right, now, how do I know? Test or multimeter? Multimeter is king, so we're gonna test uh, by taking a measurement. So if we have successfully made our jumper extending that CPU reset line from the, now from the CPU, let me get rid of this. So now, <laughs> if we have actually made a line from the CPU to here, tagged into our now micro jumper coming around here to the third pin at the home button connector, that should, because there's continuity over here to pin 32, we should get our normal diode mode reading on that line when originally it was OL. So that's the big test. Let's see. Have we made that connection? All right, let's find out. Wake this guy back up. And we are hoping to see anything other than ground or OL. Wake up. Diode mode. All right. Red probe on ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go for the money. <gasps> Point five. Yay! So yes, our micro jumper is in place. It's not ground, and we have restored that line. So now the next question is: Is that enough to bring back touch? Let's test. One way to find out. I'm looking in the microscope to make a connection. All right, so we've got our screen. And let's put on our dock and battery. Now we already suspect that this will boot. So our question is, do we have touch? Do we have touch? Because you have to have touch in order to be able to enter the passcode and click trust in order to take a backup and get the information. All right, so we are going to plug it into the computer to see if we can pass trust. Cross your fingers. All right, let's see. Come on. <gasps> Yay! So there we go, trust. Yes. Awesome. So now we have a path to data for this, for this little phone, um, which is fantastic. We could have entered the passcode. This one didn't have a passcode on there, but you still have to click trust in order to be able to initiate that data connection, especially with USB restriction. If you plug it in, the computer won't even talk to it. All right, I'm gonna click this off. Apple Pay is not available because half this board is missing. Isn't this cool? Very, very cool. All right, so there we go. We have working touch on a board, path to data. We've got this one in the ready to recover pile. And there you go. Let's check in and see how close are we? Really close. I think it's going to be today or maybe tomorrow. So again, thank you guys that have supported this channel, this little old channel. I remember when my friend Lewis had 100,000 subscribers and it seems so amazing to, to you know, reach that many people. So I really appreciate your support of our channel. We definitely, um, are, we definitely love doing YouTube for you guys and I hope that you guys um, learn something when you, when you tune in. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side of 100K.